My name is Eugene Pankovich. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a Toshiba Portage R835 ultra portable laptop with a cracked screen that we're going to show you how to change. Uh, these are nice, then we're going to take it around with you, but when you take it around, sometimes the screen breaks, so we're going to replace it. All right, before we do anything, we're going to close the laptop and take the battery out. It's very important to take the battery out when working with laptops with LED screens. So please take the battery out. Okay, once we do that, we open it back up and let's take a look at what we have. Uh, we To get to the screen, we have to remove the screen bezel around here. And to remove the screen bezel, we have to remove these hinge covers on the bottom, these uh, silver plated hinge covers, and four screws at the top. There's a trick with the screws that I'll show you in a little while. So before we go any further, let's take a look at the tools we need. We need an electronic screwdriver. This time it's a PH0 bit. PH stands for Phillips and zero stands for size. Now this is a smaller bit than is required for most laptops, so make sure you have a PH0 bit. Uh, we also need a pair of metal tweezers to remove screws that are stuck, and also an X-Acto knife with a pointed blade to remove screw covers. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove these hinge covers. They're not secured by screws, so you just clip them off. So you kind of pull them out like this and slide them out like so. So pull them out, hear a snapping sound, and then slide them out and put them to the sides. Okay, now we have to remove the screws that are securing the bezel. And there's two screws down here that were hiding behind the hinge covers. And there's four screws up here. Now there's four rubber covers up here and five plastic covers. I already checked this rubber cover here does not have a screw behind it, but this plastic cover behind it does have a screw. So that's the trick. So we use our X-Acto knife and remove the screw covers. And I like to put the screw covers next to them, next to the screws so I don't lose them like so and finally the fourth one okay next we use our screwdriver to remove the screws when i start removing screws i like to keep them in separate piles in the order of which they were removed so when i'm putting the laptop back together I don't know which screws go where. For this particular laptop, there's not too many screws to remove, so it's not as important, but for others it is. So the screws on the bottom are longer than the screws on the top, so make sure you keep them separated. Three. And four. Okay. Next, we remove the screen bezel. Now, for this laptop, the bezel is almost paper thin, so you have to be pretty gentle with it. What I should do is use my fingernails, fingertips, to lift up the edge and slowly start working around. Now take your time on this because this is a very fragile bezel. I've removed this once before so it's easier for me but there is some adhesive on the back so take your time lifting it up and lift it up from the screen size. Now on the bottom you have to use a little bit more force and you hear snapping sounds. It's not the bezel breaking. It's just it's just snapping off and the bezel comes off so it's flimsy. 
I'm sure can bend a lot, but I assume it can also break a lot. Okay, now for these ultra-bow thin laptops, sometimes what you see is that the screen is not secured with screws at all. It's just mounted on there and it's held down by the bezel. This is the case in this one. So we're, before we remove the screen, we want to loosen up the video cable and there's some tape holding it back. So we pull the tape pieces back so we can move the cable around a little bit so it doesn't get stuck. Like so. All right, now that we've freed the cable, we want to pull the screen forward and it just comes out and it lays down. Okay, now Toshiba put some plastic covers on here and there's a plastic cover here and the tape that holds down the connector here it's behind the plastic cover so we're going to need to cut this tape over here to remove the connector and the connector is down here like I said all right so what we're going to do is we're going to cut this tape being careful not to damage anything like so and then we slide out the connector. Let's lift up the tape some more so it's not stuck. Okay, and the connector comes off. Okay, before we go any further, when you're ready to reconnect the screen, this is the biggest source of trouble when people do it themselves, is that the connector is not inserted properly. So when you are inserted, it, you slide it in and make sure you feel a click. Once it clicks in, it's in there and make sure that there is no gap between the two connectors. So I'm going to give you a close up, see what it looks like. There we go, here's a good focus. Let's lift up the tape to see if we can get a better focus. Okay, pause the video right there and this is what a connector should look like when it's connected back. There should be no gap or no seam between the two connectors and you should feel a click. Alright, let's take the connector out again and let's talk about the screen because it's a bit of an unusual screen and we don't want you to get the wrong one. All right, the part number for this screen is hiding behind this black material. So we're going to peel this black material back. Actually, take it off all together, and we look at the number. It's LP one three three WH two TL L four. Now usually the numbers in the parentheses don't matter, but in this particular case it does. So when you look for a replacement screen, you need to look for TLL4, and let me show you why. Okay, I have another screen here. This is, uh, I don't know if I'm sure if we can get a good focus here. Okay, LP133WH2. TLA2. So the first number is the exact same, but the TLL4 and TLA2 are different. But these two screens are different, and let me show you how. The screen that I have has a has a ear on the side for mounting on the on the screen assembly with screws, an ear with three screw holes, and this screen right here does not have ear at all. So um, this screen is not going to work with the laptop and this is the common type of screen that's out there. So you need a very specific type of screen for Toshiba Portage R835. Okay now we at Screen Surgeons researched this, investigated this, and we have the right screen for you. So go to ScreenSurgeons.com and click on Buy a Screen. 
and that will provide the right screen. In addition, uh, with us, you will get um, free email technical support when you do the installation, and you also have a compatibility guarantee. So if by some small chance we send you the wrong screen and it doesn't work, we will send you the right screen and make it right for you. Okay, so when you do have the right screen, you put the connector on. After you put the connector on, I will put a piece of scotch tape over it to secure it. And then put the screen back and then put the bezel back on and then just put the screws in and you should be ready to go and it will be good as new. All right, uh, thank you very much and good luck. My name is Eugene Panrutkovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com.